And now, it's time for... The Rocky Mountain Horror Show. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited about this. We went to Rose Hill Cemetery. We sure did. And there are some... So this is one of my favorite ones that we've done so far, which it's one of two. But but the thing that I like about this is that there are so many little urban legends around it. Mm -hmm. There's not really a lot of it, like true hard fact, but I think that's what makes it kind of fun. Well, let's start with the two that I think everybody knows. Yes. There are two graves mm -hmm. side by side, one that says where, uh -huh. one that says wolf. Yes. <laughs> W-U-L-F. <laughs> right, right. They're right next to each other in yeah. that order. Yeah, which I think is super funny and cute. I have to assume that one of the families was buried there first, and the second one was trying to choose a plot, and they're like, that'd be funny, and they chose that one. Probably. <laughs> right? Sounds like something you'd do just for the joke. It totally is. It absolutely is. <laughs> like if there was somebody with the last name Captain. Captain? Yeah. You would. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely would. I, I Can would I find have that the plot so funny. next to theirs? <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyway, so I actually thought that was kind of an interesting one. There are a couple of stories around that. There's one that basically says something along the lines of the families knew that there was a werewolf buried there and specifically chose that plot. Mm. The dates don't really make sense on that because they died uh, pretty far apart. So I don't think there was much collusion looting going on between them. Uh, there is also a, a werewolf spirit that people have sort of said haunts the graveyard. Okay. I think that seems a little far-fetched. Uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> thank uh -huh. you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, but yeah, basically that's sort of the joke. Uh, I also saw that some, like in some of the recountings of it on the internet, they say that there's a big chunk taken out of the wolf tombstone. There's not. Okay. Nope. Basically making it sound like there was a big old werewolf bite in it. And then the knocking you know. grave. Now, that one I thought was really interesting. This one you, you can't really miss. It's the big it's sort a big of mausoleum-like mausoleum mm -hmm. or, or, or mini-leum. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a tomb, at least of some sort. Grave. And what's the name on it? Uh, so the name on it is Rogers. The second name on it being Logan. Now, this one I thought was really interesting, and I've actually got quite a bit of info on this. Okay. Now, those who are locals of the area might recognize the name Rogers from the Rogers Hotel in Historic Downtown. That's right. Funny thing is, when we were at Newly the grave renovated. today, yes, mm -hmm. when we were at the grave today, my friend who was with us, Natalie, my ghost expert, she said, I wonder if that's related to the Rogers building. Her intuition was absolutely right, and it is. That is actually the grave of B.M. Brunt Rogers, who was one of Idaho Falls' first millionaires, and he would often stand to look at his hotel, which was built in 1937 for $300,000. It had 100 beautifully furnished rooms with baths for $2 and up. Wow, and you mentioned Natalie. She is from Elsie's Closet. Yes. Mentioned her before. Talk about them a lot on this show. Pink sign just off A Street. Mm -hmm. Elsie's Closet. She also has some haunted stories. From her shop, yeah. About that place. She's also a bit of a downtown history buff, so mm -hmm. it doesn't surprise me at all that that's where her mind went, and I'm so glad it did. Wow. Because it was such a neat little uh, rabbit hole to go down. Well, and, um, and you'll see another name, um, and there's, okay, the old part of Rose Hill Cemetery is actually... In as far as you can go, uh -huh. it's right, it's adjacent to Totfus Park. Right. We saw Totfus yes. is buried there. And I don't know his first name, probably Skyler. <laughs> probably. Or Braxton <laughs> with a Y. Something like that. <laughs> but, yeah. He's, there's yeah. a, it's a cross and it just says Totfus uh -huh. across it. But anyway, finishing up with our good buddy, um, Bronson Marshall Brunt Rogers. So I actually found this on find, findagrave.com. Which is fascinating to know that that exists. Yes. Uh, but anyway, so he was born uh, the 10th of August in 1871 in New York, which makes sense that he came here and built a big old hotel because he's like, oh, it reminds me of home. He died in uh, February 16th of 1955. Wow. Which is pretty impressive. That's a good he, run, buddy. He was 83. Yeah. Uh, it says here that he's an entrepreneur. He had no children of his own, but his wife, Fanny, is the Logan that's referred to on the tomb. So you'll see Fanny Rogers Logan. Logan. Uh huh. And then she also had a daughter that he raised as well, which and, is pretty cool. And the rumor is this is the knocking grave. You knock on it. Yes. And it's kind of unfortunate because it looks like there there's some uh, ironwork and there mm -hmm. were glass plates behind it. Right. That they've, they've been smashed, clearly. Smashed since then, yeah. Yeah, which... The rumor is you knock and it knocks back. Right, right. Well, we knocked. 
It didn't knock back. It did not. Now, I actually did want to touch on that, though, because I did find a comment on one of the websites that I visited. I wish I would have written it down, but it was by uh, Jackal J, and he said that he's experienced the knocking tomb, scared the bejeebers out of me, uh, came back the next day and discovered it was a loose panel, but the effect is very real. Sounds like someone knocks after you do. Wow. So there might be a logical explanation after all. Crazy. I know. Isn't that fun? And I wonder if they fixed it. They've got a what appears to be too. a brand new padlock on it. And look at right. this shot. There's also coins. There are. On the uh, sort of sill. Mm-hmm. Uh, of the mausoleum. Yes. Yeah. Now that actually we researched a little bit at the cemetery as well. Well, so it's funny because Carly said, I think it has something to do with, um, paying the ferryman, paying the ferryman across mm-hmm. the river sticks. Yeah. And I said, no, I think it has something to do with soldiers. We were both right. Right. Yeah. Here's what we found out. The tradition dates back to the Roman empire. Uh huh. <laughs> Twice in one episode. I know. Came right back to it. Didn't it? <laughs> they play. Is it Charon or Karin? Is it Charon, oh, yeah. the ferryman of Hades? Oh, yeah. To transport them across the river Styx it's into the Karen. afterlife? Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> if the ferryman was a Karen? <laughs> yeah. The Karenman? <laughs> I'm sorry, anyway. but you have tattoos. <laughs> I can't take you across. Right. <laughs> but the Roman soldiers would place a coin in the mouth of the deceased mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, pay their toll. And then coins left on a gravesite in the U.S. anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, the practice became popular during the Vietnam War as a way to pay respects without getting into uncomfortable political discussions about the war. Right. The denomination of the coin sort of left a message like if you left a penny, you visited the grave. Mm-hmm. If you left a nickel, you trained with the person at boot camp. If you left a dime, you served with them. And if you left a quarter, you were there when they passed away. Right. And speaking of wartime Mm -hmm. and the old part of the cemetery, again, up the hill, Mm -hmm. what I imagine is Rose Hill. Right. (laughs) um, There's a couple of, I've been to Arlington National Cemetery. Yes. Near DC. And there's a couple of Arlington looking tombstones there. Yes, I did see those. They're both members of the same family. Mm -hmm. And it looks like one was from World War One, one was from World War Two. Is that a father and son, I wonder? That's what you have to wonder, right? But that was kind of cool. And mm-hmm. I know it's a little late, but thank you for your service. <laughs> right. And I think some cemeteries collect the coins from the grave sites and use the money for cemetery maintenance, burial costs, or care for indigent soldiers. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, that's a great way to do that. Mm-hmm. Back to our myths, though, we've got two more lesser known ones, and those are the ones I'm kind of more excited about because I want to hear if anyone else has any stories on these. Yes. Um, So one I heard of is a ghost girl. I heard it in passing forever ago. I couldn't find hardly anything on the internet about it except for one comment that basically said that there's rumored to be a ghost girl that haunts the mausoleum and she will say hello or she'll say hi if you say hello upon entering. Obviously, you can't enter the mausoleum anymore, so that's sort of a moot point. But I've heard that she still wanders around there, but she's definitely not as big of a ghost as some of the others. Another one that we both stumbled across that I thought was really neat is an entity called K.A. The Demon of Mm. Rose Hill Cemetery. Don't have the commenter's name, Mm -hmm. but he said, what actually haunts this cemetery is way worse than a werewolf or a grave that knocks back. Mm -hmm. It's an evil entity by the name of K.A. lurking in the lower level of the cemetery. Uh Uh-huh. So the newer stuff. Whenever I'm there with friends, I usually get a lot of activity whenever I ask questions about him. Interesting. The other spirits of the cemetery are afraid of him, and even the fellow spirits I've gotten to know... This is where it kind of falls apart for me. Oh, really, buddy? (laughs) But maybe. I understand that different people are more Mm -hmm. in tune with that than others. Mm Mm-hmm. Different spirits I've gotten to know have refused to do something because it was against K.A. He's something to not be feared, but he is not someone you want to challenge. He's attacked me while I've slept. Terrifying. (laughs) Did I read that right? Something to not be feared, but he's attacked me while I've slept. That sounds pretty scary, bro. I mean, I would be afraid. Just saying. (laughs) He choked me when I've entered the cemetery, and he's not friendly toward visitors. Again, not be feared like... So we're in I the would cemetery. Be of anyone who went for my throat, especially someone I couldn't see. And I'm I'm calling out KA's name, mm-hmm. and nothing happened. I didn't choke up or or uh, or anything. <laughs> Thankfully, seize up. 
Well, we did also go go during the daytime, so. The scariest thing to me while we were there was, did we happen to walk by a grave that appeared to be exhumed? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, we definitely did. I, I don't know exactly what the story is it yet. Three, it had three plywood boards on it <laughs> and an orange cone. Mm -hmm. So it was just a little bit, um, there was a little crack in the front of it. So you could actually look down into it. And it was definitely an open grave. And there was a little bit of evidence at the front that there was a tombstone there before too. Yes, I saw that. And that it looks yeah. like the sod had been replaced. So right. I, I don't know under what circumstances you would, I mean, unless there was a forensic investigation or something. Right, right. But, uh, and, and even remove the tombstone. Like, don't you pay for the plot before you kick it? Usually, yeah. yeah. I, I would think that the only real reason you might want to do that would be if maybe someone in your family got buried there and you didn't have the money to buy the surrounding plots and other people bought them, but you still wanted that person to be with the rest of the family. There you go. So, you know, okay. once yeah, you got the other plots for everyone else, you'd move them. Be reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was totally an open grave and it was super spooky and gave us the chills. And Mike did download a random EMF meter on his phone, which I don't think that's how that works. I don't think that you can actually I don't detect think electromagnetic fields with an iPhone. <laughs> has that, yeah. Yeah. But it was any, it ranged anywhere from 30 to 50 until I got in the car and it went to like 300. <laughs> right, which was weird. <laughs> uh, but also it did. Maybe my car is haunted, Carly. <laughs> well, I mean, it is a little older. It could be. <laughs> I'm the original owner, though. No one's died in it as far as I know. <laughs> I would say, too. Uh, it did also beep a little bit around that open grave. That's true. It so did. So that's a little spooky. And we walked by it like two or three times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it did it a couple of times, too, which I thought was weird. You know, uh, what's funny is we saw a couple of people walking uh -huh. their dogs there. Yeah. Yeah, and as a, matter, as a matter of fact, my friend Natalie likes to walk her dogs there. And I never really thought about it, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, I guess back in the day, yeah, before Totfus died and <laughs> deeded the land for the park, right, I guess, right. people would go through cemeteries at night, you know, well-groomed grounds. And right. It was actually really common for cemeteries to be used as parks. Matter of fact, Mary Shelley, author of Frankenstein, learned how to write by tracing the letters on her mother's grave. And if that isn't goth, I don't know what is. <laughs> You know who would love this is Nora Hayde from... Uh, I bet she would. BSU Women's <laughs> Beach Volleyball. Well, that's our show. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening and uh, getting the shivers a little bit with us. Mm -hmm. And don't say K-A. <laughs> I will Whatever say... Whatever you do. One last thing about it. We didn't have any personal stories from Rose Hill Cemetery. So if you've got one, please leave it in the comments because we would love to hear some real live stories about the spooky stuff that's happened to you. Oh! <laughs>